Greetings, Mathies, and welcome to second semester of PAG. Now, PAG stands for Principles of Algebra and Geometry. So you have survived the first semester, which was all algebra, linear, exponential, and quadratic functions. And now we are going to introduce you to our geometry unit. Now, this first unit is going to have a ton, a ton of vocabulary. And so uh, we are definitely going to take notes, talk about that vocabulary, practice with it, um, use that GeoGebra. Geo, geo, <laughs> I have a hard time spitting that thing out. Um, so we just want to get you real familiar with all the geometry terms before you take regular geometry next year. So let's get going. A foot. I had to think about that one for a second. Oh boy, that's bad. Okay, so let me get going here. And uh, so uh, take your notes here. And uh, get ready to do some writing. Let me set up here real quick. There we go. All right. Sorry about the delay there. Well, here are your notes. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write all of them first before I do any folding and cutting. So just flip it over and we're going to go over one definition at a time. Now, what I ended up doing is I went ahead of time and I have all these written out uh, because it's quite a bit of writing. So don't be shy about pausing, but maybe just listen to a few things first before you pause on me. So the very first definition that we have is a point. And some of these uh, actually have no dimension. It's kind of um, uh, it's a very interesting concept. We have to actually show a point so we can see it, but it is really interesting that it has no dimension at all. But it is a specific location, and we always name a point by a capital letter. So what I did uh, going through these definitions is I looked over at the picture that's in the middle of your page there, and I just wrote a few examples. Now, there are many, many, many points in the picture. So I am just giving you one example. Now, when you do your own work in the middle, after you take your notes, you can specify all the different points that are going to be in that diagram. Okay, so go ahead and pause at this time if you need to. Otherwise, I'm going to move on. A line. All right, so a line is just one dimension. And of course, we have to draw it, it does, you know, we see a certain thickness of it, but it actually, uh, in some reality, again, it's kind of one of those invisible things in geometry. Uh, but we use, obviously, our pencil to draw a line, and it is represented uh, with two arrows. So it's a line with two arrows. You're going to see that here in just a second, and it's going to extend without end. So a line uh, is infinite going both directions. And we also name that with any two points that are on that line. Here's what the symbols look like. So kind of two ways that you can represent the line. You can write the word line and it's in cursive. <laughs> Hopefully you guys still know how to write in cursive. So an example is letter N. You can see that N was in cursive over in your picture. And then I also can name it here were two points that were on that particular line. And notice that I have them capitalized and the symbol has um, two arrows on the end. Really important to distinguish between a line and we'll get to array and a segment. Okay, so the last main feature that we have here is called a plane. And so a point's no dimension, a line is one dimension, and a plane is two dimensions. And we kind of represent that by a shape. 
Uh, notice over there, it looks like a parallelogram. It's not always necessarily a parallelogram. It kind of looks like that to me here. I don't have specific measurements to uh, guarantee whether it is or not, but it's represented by some shape. But the thing that you have to remember, it extends without end. And of course, we can't draw that very easily. Um, and so we'll kind of talk about examples in class um, so you can get a vision of that. So if you look at a wall in our classroom, yeah, it kind of stops, but yet, you know, geez, our wall uh, really does extend um, into a big area. And then a plane is going to be named with three, three points that are on the plane. So um, just going through that again. So a point is one letter. You use two letters for a line and you use three letters for a plane. Okay, so let me back that up here a little bit so you can see. Um, so our plane is actually plane Q. Let me get that fixed here. I think I was looking at my notes from last year. So this is plane P and you can see that that is over in the corner there. So it's a capital letter, unlike a line, which had a little letter. Okay, so we ha have to get used to kind of the notations that mathematicians end up using. So we are using uh, the letter capital P for this particular plane. Now, another way you can name it is any three letters that are on that plane. So X, Y, and Z happen to be on that plane. Um, X and Y are also on a line. So a lot of different ways that you can name all of these different parts. Okay, we're gonna go to the right-hand side and talk about a few other terms here. All right, a ray. Uh, one thing I remember with a ray is like a ray of sunshine. And so that may help you remember. So kind of like a sunshine is a ray. It has one, let me zoom in here real quick. It has one endpoint. It is named by the endpoint first, and then one other point that happens to be uh, on that ray. So for example, now notice there's just one arrow. For example, ray WV. So if I go over here, that means I'm talking about this ray right here, starting at W, extending through X and Y. Well, I got to back that up. I had WV, didn't I? All right, so let me cover this puppet up. It's all right. I had to look to make sure I was doing the right one. So I'm talking about WV. I'm talking about this particular ray. Okay, so that's why I'm covering it up so you can see this endpoint and then it extends on through V. And then I also wrote out ray XY. So let's see if I can get it right the first time here. Sorry about that. Okay, so ray X, Y. So I'm kind of covering up that other part of the line. So we're just talking about this part of the line, X, Y. So ray X, Y. All right, again, pause if you need to, just to catch up on the notes here. Feel free to do that. I'm gonna keep moving on though. The next definition is segment. A segment has two endpoints, so you can tell that's going to be part of a line, just a chunk of it, and it is named by its two endpoints. So let's take a look at the two that I ended up picking out from your picture, BW. So I'm just talking about this little part of the whole line, okay, that little chunk, because we might need to measure it. And then the other one I ended up writing was, well, I just did it the opposite way. VW, or I can write WV. Okay, that ends up being the same segment. So you don't have to worry about the order on a segment. You do have to worry about the order on a ray. You have to make sure you have the endpoint first. Okay, let me show that here real quick. So again, it's a good shot for you to write down the information. 
And then the last two definitions are collinear and coplanar. So those are already spelled out for you. And co, you know, like if it's co-ed, I think of a co-ed dorm. Uh, I lived in a co-ed dorm when I went to Morningside. And so one end of the dorm uh, were the females, the other end were males, so it was a co-ed dorm. But we had one dorm uh, that was all male. So um, no females in that particular dorm. I don't know if they've changed it since then, since I was in school. So co points that are on the same line. And so I just put like an ampersand sign in between, however you make that. So two points that I picked that are on the same line, W and Y. And I have a, a lot of other points that are uh, collinear as far as this particular line. And then coplanar probably makes sense. Points that are on the same plane. And so I end up, I just picked Z and V. They just happen to be on the same plane. Now on this picture, this line is cutting through like the piece of paper. So just so you know, T is not on this plane. All these other letters, X, Y, Z, B, and W would all be on plane P. But this line ends up kind of, um, yeah, and it's hard. This is a three-dimensional picture on a two-dimensional piece of paper. And sometimes that is hard to visualize. But because of these dots right here, it just means that this line R is cutting through the plane. All right, let me show you this one last time here for this last one. Now, your job is to do two through eight. Okay, so I've kind of done number one, went through the definitions, gave you some examples. But see if you can come up with more than what I just ended up giving you in your notes.